Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Zen Lounge. We have a special guest with us today. We're going to be covering, you know, how to make the world a better place in this episode, in this interview. I have Miranda with Ground NFT. She just released and got verified on the Sologenic Marketplace. She's using NFTs in a, in a unique way to solve issues, to build awareness in food. You know, something that we have to do every single day. You know, every single day we got to eat. And, uh, you know, we don't really pay much attention to it. We don't really spend too much learning about where our food comes from and the issues with food. So Miranda is going to be here to update us on how she's going to use NFTs to, um, to uh, you know, do what she does. So hello, Miranda. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to meet with you and get to talk to you about this really cool collection that I'm excited to bring to you. All of what was the inspiration? What was the, like the inspiration behind this collection? Yeah. So, I mean, I've always been um, really inspired by watching the forces of like light and dark, you know what I mean? Um, kind of, oh, <laughs> kind of um, play with each other throughout time and space. And so Grounded NFT kind of captures this polarity and contrast between you know, good and bad and health and sickness and this kind of thing um, through the exploration of food. So the first collection we have here is For the Love of Fruit. And it's kind of based off of, you know, the wisdom and the healing nature that Mother, Mother Nature provides us with. Like this food is readily available on the planet for us here. <laughs> and its contrasting collection will be more towards the food that we're marketed so so what are some uh what is the uh, the ultimate so this is uh the nfts are supporting a nonprofit, correct absolutely yeah there are a couple of nonprofits um benefiting from the sale of each nft the first one is geared towards um teaching communities how to um build and sustain food gardens in their front yards or in schoolyards and teaching um, school-aged children how to maintain and grow food. And the second one is a community initiative that serves um, people facing food scarcity due to, you know, financial difficulties with um, memberships to like local farms, which allows them to get like, you know, locally grown produce on a weekly basis, as well as like an education on how you know, you can take care of yourself in a way that's not, um, you know, directly just based off of food that's, you know, being marketed and sold in stores. That's awesome. So how, yeah. what happened before this? Like what got you down to like this journey of health it had to have been longer? Yeah. Just, so, I mean, like, us, I think, oh, go on. <laughs> I'll just say, can you tell us about like how your health journey started and like why you think it's important to bring awareness to these issues with food? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I think we all go through our own like awakening phases on many different levels. And for me, um, you know, like I, I, I went through my own like sickness and this kind of thing and like, um, you know, not really agreeing with what um, doctors and like pharmaceuticals they were trying to give me. And so after a bunch of self-medication, I realized that I could actually like heal myself and really increase my own awareness by, you know, changing the way that I was eating and eating food that was full of, you know, photons from the sun and information from our surrounding, um, you know, just like nature in general and how that can really heal us at a cellular level when we allow the body 
the space and the environment it needs to heal itself. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, I'm really big into food and I think it's really important to have a whole show called health is wealth. Mm-hmm. And just so you guys know how I met Miranda, she's actually a member of my website. She's not paying me to show her NFTs. This is all just, you know, we also linked up through Chris O'Brien, come out better. Who's been on the show a lot. So she is a member of the community. Uh, you know, this isn't financial endorsement, uh, do what you want with this information, but uh, this is really exciting. So wh- like, how did you come across the, like, when did you want to become like use NFTs to actually like make a difference? Like, how did you make that connection? Lots of people are using NFTs, you know, to, you know, not that many people are using NFTs to actually like solve a problem. Like, how did you see NFTs actually like, you know, and then you, you took action, which is awesome too. You know, like you actually started your collection and saw NFTs can make real world differences. I'm, I'm super excited about that. So how how did you like find out about NFTs and how did you like make this whole project happen? So a lot of people, they want to start NFTs, but then they don't know like the first steps to um, actually making it into reality that could actually, you know, fund something like, what was that whole process like for you? So other people could get excited and, and start other NFT projects themselves. Yeah, absolutely. So like, I've been very passionate about sharing with the health conscious community over the past several years. And I've also been like an artist for over half my life. And so, you know, I, I was very curious about the NFT space, but like until Sologenic uh, announced that there was going to be an NFT marketplace, like I was kind of had my ideas on the back burner. And so when that announcement was made, I was like, you know, it all just kind of came together really quickly for me. I knew, I knew, you know, I was going to put what I was passionate about into something that could, um, you know, be of benefit to a greater cause. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I started immediately once I knew that that was going to be readily available as a platform for me to do so. And, um, was it, I would before, say, before you jump in, was it relatively easy to, did Sologenic make it like user-friendly to do? Oh, uh, it, it's so clean. And so, um, yeah, it just has like great, great features that make it seem like super easy. Like, you know, especially for the amount of NFTs that I, I, I went through and put up yesterday. Um, I mean, with everything that's, you know, learning something new always has comes with a learning curve, but the platform itself made it like super super user friendly <laughs> that's what i like to hear i i own a bunch of solos so i want to hear that you know this thing is easy to use for almost anybody you never made nfts before you were able to just get on and no this is my first collection. time and i was like well, i'm just gonna be i'm just gonna learn you know what i mean like because this isn't the only collection that i plan on doing i already have other things in the works and so for me it was just like trial and error what's gonna be easiest i found that using the um zoom or the zoom wallet was a you know, was definitely the easiest way to hook it up and get it going. And I mean, that's what I would recommend for anybody who's kind of starting their journey on the Sologenic NFT marketplace. So, so I have this, give us some, um, give us a couple fun facts about, you know, agriculture and food that's happening today. So give us some fun facts that would blow my mind. <laughs> So, I mean, my, my biggest thing is, you know, ec- economically grown food, you know, um, it's, it's geometry, it's sacred geometry is not the same as like the organic or the heirloom version of foods that we eat. And so, you know, we're taking in, you know, um, the information of, let's say an apple that's different from its original source. And it, it, it in turn affects us at a atomic you know, level, um, so to speak. And so I think that's a great thing to keep in mind when you're trying to lean towards a more more whole um, foods diet or, you know what I mean? Like integrating more um, living foods into your life. And um, I even, even more so over the past year have been more conscientious about trying to locally source my stuff through like co-ops from farms and things like that, just because the food that sits on the shelf is, you know, while it's living at compared to like, let's say a box of cereal, (laughs) um, it's traveled so far that, you know, it's not, it doesn't have like as much bioavailability of nutrients and, you know, photons from the sun and all of the information that our body needs as much as, you know, something that I can get from the local farmers in the, in the valley here, you know, where are you, what, what state are you in? I'm in Colorado. 
Colorado? <laughs> yeah. So you go to like local co-ops and farmers. Yeah. Market. I mean, we're really lucky here. Um, somebody actually organizes a co-op where like, I'll just order my produce online from all of these, you know, let's just say 20 different farmers and it, and it just shows up, you know, I can pick it up here locally. So people, people will be surprised. Uh, you know, a lot of people instantly write, Oh, there's no farms by me, but I live in Las Vegas. I live in the desert and there's, you know, if you search, I guarantee you could find someone in your area that is doing, you know, producing local foods. I have a farm next to me. I could get apples, zucchini, yeah. just straight off the vines. I was going to say, I know you guys have some cool people there. I spent a couple, I spent half the year actually last year in Vegas. <laughs> so, yeah. So there's a lot of cool, f interesting food, uh, co-ops, even for, you know, uh, random even like dairy and meat products. There's people mm -hmm. from Utah that will drive in the town with, you know, fresh, fresh uh, dairy fresh meat like there's 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 stuff out there if you really search and um you really notice the difference between the store stuff and the natural stuff when you when you're yeah. eating it you're right you get like a different energy feel coming down when you mm -hmm. eat a fresh apple off the tree yeah when it hasn't been you know when all the enzymes are still activated in that and that's you know where a lot of healing does come so yeah and like generally we get lucky if you're getting local food and it doesn't have like as much pesticides, you know what I mean? Or these kind of preservatives that they're putting on it. So you're really getting that maximum value when it's closer to you. Absolutely. So any other, you know, health tips or, you know, facts about what's happening. And I heard one of the biggest issues nowadays, especially with, with food is the fact that, you know, the mineralization of the soil and a lot of these, that's why it's good to go local where people, mm -hmm actually care about the soil and think about yeah. that but you got any other any fun facts about fruits and vegetables like that uh, i i just say keep it local i mean you know you're you're you definitely hit the nail on the head um you know people who practice um regenerative regenerative um growing um and who who do care about the earth and the kind of nutrients that it provides for the plants is definitely something to keep in mind um, you know, because when you're, when you're buying economically produced food, I mean, the integrity of the soil is just incompar incomparable, really. Right, right. And, uh, you know, that's, you know, where the minerals, those little minerals are the things that people are lacking. And as soon as you start getting those minerals into your system, all of a sudden, you know, the healing starts, you know, so yep. those little fine things. So what are all the, the different channels that we could basically stay up to date with grounded NFT. I'm showing your Instagram right now. Yeah. So uh, where all do we keep track with everything that you do? Um, so same username for Instagram and Twitter and um, the website as well. So, so grounded, grounded underscore NFT, NFT. Uh, just grounded NFT.com. So perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, there's anything else that you'd like to update, update us on? Um, I mean, I have its contrasting collection, like I said, which is, uh, it's fast food dudes, you know, it's geared towards foods that are packaged and marketed to us, you know, and kind of um, used to, I don't know, uh, create culture and identification and kind of, you know, um, the normality with, with the masses. So, that will be the next one. And this is all kind of like a precursor to something much cooler. So these are just the characters and getting something set up for, you know, the bigger vision here. <laughs> when it talking comes about to the bigger NFTs. vision now, we're talking about the bigger vision. So <laughs> what ultimately do you hope this NFT collection and future NFT collections, like, what do you hope that this solves? Like, what do you hope the end goal is as far as like the, the nonprofit contributions that you make? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously like raising awareness, um, helping people identify with their own awakening. I think that that's a very interesting period in all of our lives when we're kind of in that transitory phase and we're looking for other things that are kind of relatable or that we feel like we identify with. And um, yeah, I mean, obviously giving back to the community and who knows, maybe, you know, um, building something in the tangible space, you know, eventually. So that would definitely be the bigger vision. The cool of the, NF, if the NFTs could like uh, get you some 
because there's going to be like royalties coming with XLS 20. So it'd be cool if you could get like some fresh, if you could use the NFTs, get like a box of fresh fruit or something. Absolutely. I, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. So that'll be, that'll be super exciting finding out like how to, how to use these NFTs to get, you know, utility and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to the innovative side of it. I mean, I'm a one man show or a one woman show. So, you know, it's, it's little, it's little steps um, at a time, but definitely um, interested in how to integrate it into something that can be physically tangible and for the good of us all here and in the community, but also in our own, you know, real life. How long have you been getting into like uh, XRP and crypto? Um, This will be like year three for XRP. Um, It's been much longer than that for the crypto space (laughs) for me in general. So you've been in in crypto or have you been in health just as long as crypto or or do they both connect for you? Yeah, uh, probably right around the same time, actually. Like I would say like 2017 was really like, you know, just like the layers started peeling back, you know, I mean, like, I feel like when you go through awakening, it's like you're awakening to, you know, narratives that are going on, finances, health, all kinds of things. There's really, it's like no holds. So it was definitely a process for all of those topics <laughs> kind of at once. It's all about like, you know, taking responsibility, taking your mm. sovereign control back, you know, absolutely accountability. Once you just take sure. your, start doing your own research into your health, you know, next thing you know, you start researching, you know, cause health, when you do go down the path of becoming more healthy, it does cost you more money. <laughs> Usually, yeah. I mean, sometimes it's you end up finding cheat codes and discounts, but it does cost you more money. So you, all of a sudden you get conscious about your finances and then you want to, you know, study your finances. And all of a sudden you find out, Oh my gosh, everything's wrong with the financial world. Just like everything's wrong with the health world. They're telling us, and it's like a big eye opening experience. Then all of a sudden you're taking responsibility of your health, your responsibility of, I think that, you know, a lot of the gold and silver shops during the pandemic, they were the ones that actually put up the sign saying in Vegas too. It's like, Hey, if you're wearing a mask, you're actually not allowed to come in. Like they reverse psychology. Yeah. They use reverse psychology. Cause they were like the people that want to buy gold and silver aren't the people that are going to, aren't going to listen to the mainstream news. They aren't that person that's going to be afraid of some, some germ. Absolutely. These people have done their own research. They understand the problems they know about sound money. So we actually want to attract people that aren't wearing a mask versus the people wearing mm-hmm. a mask. And that's kind of the same thing with crypto. Like people are alternative thinkers and we think outside of the box yeah. and uh, you know, it all kind of health depth. Like when people are like choose to have self-knowledge and educate themselves over health, you know, they're not going to be doing the, what the mainstream are doing. And same thing with crypto. We aren't doing what the mainstream people are doing with our no. finances. We're going alternative. So yeah. forging your own uh, path. And I think that really starts with like getting to know yourself. You know what I mean? Like, who are you (laughs) as a being here, you know, on the land, (laughs) so to speak. So. And if you're eating, you are what you eat. So if you're eating a bunch of McDonald's and junk food, all of a sudden you're going to have all this foreign substance, inorganic substance into you. And then all of a sudden you do forget who you are. You do get depressed. You do get anxiety. And the best thing you could do is, you know, eat an apple that is part of this earth right off the tree. And you're going to be feeling a lot more, you know, like yourself, you know, have energy, you're going to have, you know, positive mental clarity. Once you get like live foods in you, Mm -hmm. you are what you eat. Why would you want to eat a bunch of dead things? You need real stuff inside you that has enzymes, healthy, everything. Yeah. Such a huge part. You know, I, I pay like before I was always into investing, but I didn't take my investing as serious as I do now until I first invested in my health. So my first goal was investing in a whole cabinet full of supplements, um, healthy herbs, and Mm -hmm. all of that basically spiraled me down this, this to where I am now. It's all about, you know, health. That's, that's number one. Cause what's the point if we get all this money from Sologenic Corium going (laughs) to the moon and then all of a sudden, you know, we're crippled and yeah, we haven't taken uh, care of the vessel. Absolutely. What's the use if you only, if you only are gonna have have the wealth to have a a few fun years? You know what I mean. Our vessel is definitely deserving. I mean, it's our home, so it's deserving of our biggest investment. You know what I mean. And you know, the standard American diet is so um, rigged to keep you in that like illusion, those loops and stuff like that. And so taking care of the body allows you to be free and 
allows you to see things with clarity and use discernment and ultimately break free of all the matrices you matrices you find yourself in exactly because uh, the health is going to give us the uh, strength and power to, and give us the momentum to you know push forward any obstacle that we have if we have a big obstacle that comes up we need the energy to flow right through it so yeah um, what i do love is getting the community you know find people in the community find out find people that are like solving problems because you know this is just a testament to show you know once all these projects moon and regulations come and the bankers and the central bankers pump our bags for us and we have all this abundance you know our community isn't just going to be buying lambos you know we're going to have people like you solving huge issues for you know food and and we have other people that have came on the show all the different types of topics we've talked about and the shows you know that a bunch of people want to make the world a better place and uh soon now we have resources you know mm -hmm. gofundme used to fun used to uh shut down people's accounts you know the trucker movement mm -hmm. whether you were for that movement or not for that movement still wrong to you know shut down someone's fund me and people had all this funds going to them and then they just the government didn't approve it so they just boom you're gone what's beautiful about you know being able to uh, fund our own projects through nfts or the new i the one uh project launcher that's coming to sologenic is now people could fund these alternative thinking things without being afraid of the centralized overlords coming and shutting us down you know how much yeah. of a benefit would have this been for some people that got censored and you know they weren't able to get the funds they weren't able to get the the, the funding they needed to fund these life-changing projects and now that with the decentralized uh, dexes we could do that sensor resistant free and it's going to be awesome to see what projects get funded and i think that you could even get you know highlight it on the sologenic main page so like it's going to be really cool hopefully this video will also inspire some other people to launch some projects and we could see all types of new innovations and and uh, we could really create this golden timeline that we always talk about on this show so you're a big fan of water too educate us on water what's wrong with <laughs> should people be drinking tap water no <laughs> no honestly when i woke up to water i i first just realized how scary tap water was how many pharmaceuticals how many chemicals are allowed to be past a certain parts per million limit and you know so you know the first awareness to learn there would be fil at least filtering your water with some some kind of three stage filter or you know invest some money into the water that what you are drink some of the because the things that you've seen in tap oh I, like i mean outside of pharmaceuticals which i think is just wildly gross like you could just be consuming any kind of pharmaceutical out there like i mean you're yes, talking you're about right. all so the chemicals I, that i don't even know how quick. to pronounce <laughs> so in vegas a lot of the water is recycled so the hospitals dump a bunch of pharmaceuticals down the drains and then it ends up getting recycled back into the tap water and you aren't even aware of it but you're getting pharmaceuticals in your water and and also because it's recycled they have to basically put contaminants in to kill bacteria and one of that yeah. is chlorine so people yeah. go swimming in the pool get drenched in chlorine and then they hop out take a shower thinking they're getting rid of the chlorine but they're Your actually getting more chlorine there it's all chlorine in the shower as well but then what's even worse is if it's a hot shower all this chlorine steams and you breathe mm -hmm. in the chlorine gas into your chamber so it's like literally a gas chamber yeah so it's tap yeah. water is a whole rabbit hole and you're like holy crap so water many. has really been the rabbit hole for me i mean you know like it started with health and food and then it turned to water and just i mean the body is water you know what i mean like we we are able to program ourselves and and live through this blueprint of our you know of our genes of our dna and our dna is surrounded by water like we are we are expressing ourselves and we are animating ourselves through water and so whether you're getting the water from fruits or you're getting it from your sink you know what i mean like it's it's such a vital role no one even realizes really how dehydrated they are um it really wasn't until i found the right kind of water that i realized that my brain had literally never been hydrated for <laughs> all the years that i'd been alive and that was a really eye opener for me and something that became very passionate for me to share 
cool. So this is awesome. This is awesome. It's been a great interview. Um, yeah. There's so much more we could probably talk about, but I think um, anything else you want to update about future plans with the NFTs and what you're doing? Yeah. Like I said, I'll have um, it's contrasting collection coming out soon. And, you know, that's already kind of written into um, this first collection. And I'll be excited to share how these two um, contrasting forces of like good and bad, health and sickness, light and dark kind of come together um, in a collection very shortly. <laughs> so two worlds, you have the light and darkness come together and basically create a new balance, a new equilibrium. Yeah yeah it's pretty awesome it's pretty awesome i'm excited it's well we what, look forward uh, to me. <laughs> we look forward to watching your uh your your platform grow uh, i wish you a lot of success hopefully thank a lot you of our followers go over to your pages and check out what you're doing and hopefully they get inspired to also create their own project you know soul it very easy for people to hop on get verified and the cool thing is we get to be you know some of the first projects ever on this platform i think there's going to be tons and tons and tons hundreds thousands of projects and benefit of getting into now is you know we're not lost in the sauce of all these other projects and and uh, that's why i want to support all the people that are getting in now because you guys are like the ogs and you guys are basically uh there's so much more coming like i don't know if you looked into corium but there's going to be so many cool things with like uh, with dows and all these things to really yeah kickstart these ideas that you have so make sure you Absolutely. keep building this and and uh you know after we moon with solo core uh definitely probably want to team up with you on you know helping feed some nations like we're gonna have the wealth to do that like go to some yeah. third world countries and basically help them you know it's it's a huge issue you know what, what's happening with food prices going up mm -hmm. to the moon yeah. eventually it can't go like that because our food whole entire food system is not sustainable you know we need to teach people to get back to the roots mm -hmm. you know, imagine if everybody in the world just contributed growing their own little public gardens you know all of a sudden right. like way too to. many way too many corporations have control over you know what i mean the like milk price is going up every yeah. single day egg price is going up every single day well what if you know the community just said hey what if we all just got a bunch of chickens and we all just let the eggs grow for and everybody in the community was able to get like 10 eggs each for free yeah nobody had to be hungry and it just took that one investment or in the time to maintain it and that could change everything you know and the problem is we don't really have anything to govern or anything to keep all this you know trackable so i think this mm -hmm. new technology is going to allow us to uh, reorganize the way we do things and take people like us to um to uh, kickstart it and then all of yeah. a sudden, you know, we got these local food gardens and food uh, production places. And instead of having some pointless palm trees everywhere, we could plant orange trees and apple trees everywhere. Right, and, walking down the like, sidewalk, getting some yeah, food. Everywhere you walk, there was just an orange tree. You just grabbed an orange, you ate it. And then yeah. there's a lemon tree. Like we actually were smart. Instead of planting something that looks all cool, let's plant something that could feed somebody. <laughs> And then the homeless person, you know, doesn't have to beg on the street for, for food. You just go grab an orange, eat it, an avocado, eat it. Especially in California. I mean, the, California, it's so easy to grow all this stuff. Like, yeah, be everywhere. And I've, you know, I got a farm right next to me. I was blown away because I just moved to this side of town. And they got, like, everything, zucchini, all growing straight out of the desert. So if we can yeah. grow stuff here in Vegas and there's nothing stopping anywhere, anywhere else, it's just that there's all these greedy food people that, Mm -hmm. you know, trying to control and dominate the market yeah i mean there's solutions for every you know what they do region. they just grow corn everywhere that's all yeah. they care about corn. <laughs> just, corn is all gmo they gmo own yeah Monsanto seeds so you go to like idaho it's just cornfields everywhere this is what about all the other stuff else. you know yeah absolutely it's insane so all right well thank you so much for hopping on the yeah, show yeah thank you this and uh keep up the date and uh absolutely we'll connect again soon Peace. absolutely take it easy